we're ahead of everybody else because this is a technology that was originally developed by our founder, Jamie Thompson. As you know, uh, embryonic stem cells were discovered by Dr. Jamie Thompson in 1998. Yeah, so the question about in science whether there's a eureka moment you can point to and what your feelings are comes up pretty frequently. And in the case of human ES cells, I physically did that work myself. When you take a cell from your skin, for example, and put it into tissue culture, it'll divide well, and scientists will figure out how to do that. But it divides a set number of times that undergo something called senescence. But with these embryonic stem cells, you can divide forever, so you can make as many as you want. So that's the first property. The second property is that they'll form anything in your own body. Those had uh, political and ethical uh, concerns around them based on their derivation. Many of the researchers, including Dr. Thompson, started to look for alternatives uh, to represent individual biology. In the case of the reprogramming, Junying Yu did it in my laboratory. He's a very talented scientist. Um, so I kind of got that second hand. In 2007, uh, Dr. Thompson and Dr. Shinya Yamanaka simultaneously discovered a method to take a, a skin cell or a what, what's known as a somatic cell and turn the clock back to a stem cell state um, in a method called reprogramming. These cells um, are called induced pluripotent stem cells and for all practical purposes have the same functionality um, and uh, properties of an embryonic stem cell. Now iPS cells are similar and they have those basic properties, but the special thing about iPS cells is you go to any individual person and make them, so you have complete control over the genetic background. You introduce a series of factors that have been discovered um, to cause the cell to reprogram itself back into an embryonic state. And they have to um, basically cr uh, produce proteins in the cell for a period of time, approximately 16 days once that culture has been initiated, that then tell the cell to revert back to its original state. Once that's done, those cells can then be uh, propagated or divided and expanded indefinitely and then can be used as a starting material to uh, turn into all the cell types in the body. Instead of being in a sense experimented on during the clinical process to be able to in advance know that if I take a drug that might have heart effects I know exactly what those effects are on my cells not someone someone else's. So most of the research we do in our laboratory today is on iPS cells but we still use the older human ES cells to go back to to make sure that these new cells have the same properties. So the use of embryonic stem cells is not going away anytime soon but I think over time uh, more and more people use IPS cells instead of PS cells, and there are not the same kind of ethical issues. These technologies could, in the long term, be used for uh, regeneration, uh, tissue regeneration, or uh, tissue implantation to affect injury. When we manufacture a heart cell, for instance, that cell could be put in a person to see if it helps regenerate the heart. There's even a potential. I, I have a proposal on my desk from some scientists where they use our heart cells to grow whole organs. That's not going to happen tomorrow. What really the beauty of our cells today is that you can use our cells today to start doing the experiments, the tests. For the foreseeable future, I think that the real value of these cells is in discovering new drugs and modeling for diseases. So the company itself has been focusing on being able to generate these cells in an environment uh, such that they could be used in those uh, capacities. Um, and, and have research ongoing to make sure that when those problems are solved, in essence, that we'll be able to manufacture the cells in a quantity such that they can be used in a clinical space. For the um, IPS cells, it, it was done in a hyper-competitive environment where there was a high level of stress to get all the things we did need to done to prove that they're the right cells and get it published. And there's certainly, you know, at this point in my life, a lot of satisfaction to have accomplished all those things, but in real time, it's a lot of hard work rather than one moment.